In this first video of my new Solar Sunday series, we will explore whether installing solar panels really is the best choice for everyone. We'll discuss the common mistakes people make when installing solar panels, as well as five reasons why you should reconsider installing them, and why battery storage without solar panels could be a better alternative for you. Be sure to watch this video first to make an informed decision, so that you're not just throwing money away. If you're considering purchasing solar panels, there are a few things you need to know before you take the plunge. In this video, we'll dive into the common mistakes people make when installing solar panels and what you need to consider before signing an order with a solar installer in your area. Using a solar leasing company instead of purchasing the panels outright. Let's talk about buying versus leasing. Leasing solar panels is an approach that means that you, as a homeowner, can get solar panels installed on your roof for absolutely free without having to pay anything. You then either get the benefit of cleaner, greener energy without having to do anything further, or the option to purchase cheaper energy per kilowatt hour, which is hopefully cheaper than your usual tariff. Sounds like a win-win, right? Well, not quite. Leasing home solar panels puts a lien on your home. And this is a problem when you come to sell. The lease company is the one who owns the panels and the inverter installed on your house. Anyone buying your home has to take over the lease contract with the solar supplier and will be prevented from installing their own panels or perhaps even their own batteries. These leases are sometimes called third-party owned solar leases or power purchase agreements. Leases, especially in the UK, were very common some years ago when FIT payments were generous and could be locked in with the supplier. This could generate a decent return for the leasing company. Now, I suspect the leasing companies may be very reluctant to allow you to install home battery storage as they generate income from selling excess back to the grid, rather than letting you store it for yourself for later. So they may not allow you to install batteries. Now, whilst leasing seems like a less common thing now, uh, I have seen a lot of adverts on social media from leasing companies. So if you're considering the zero deposit solar option, tread very carefully. It's nearly always better to calculate a loan and purchase your solar panels that way. Some finance companies have specialised lines of credit for home improvements, especially for the installation of renewables. You might find, like I did, that this is a better way to fund and purchase solar panels rather than leasing them. Now, when buying solar panels, it's really important to buy brand name ones because these have a long lives and warranties to match. So make sure that you pick a company that will still be around a decade or two from now to honour any warranty claims. Now, these brands for solar panels include Panasonic, SunPower, LG, Rex Solar, and Chinese brands like JA Solar, Longa Solar, I think I've said that right, Trina and Jinko Solar. The same applies to in the inverters. Microinverters and optimizers from companies such as Tigo, Enphase and SolarEdge are really good choices. Don't buy solar panels with the intention to export. Instead, it's recommended to get battery storage to store any excess energy. This is because many electricity companies only offer you a fraction of the retail price of electricity for the excess energy sent to the grid. In most cases, it's more cost effective for you to use the energy you generate yourself rather than export it. So for example, our energy supplier right now will pay us eight pence per kilowatt hour that we send to the grid during the day. But then they'll charge us 22 pence for each kilowatt hour that we buy from them during the evening. Each eight pence they pay us during the day is sold to someone else at full price and the energy company makes a profit in the difference. It's hardly a fair deal, that. Paying cash for a solar energy system may not be the best financial decision, primarily due to inflation. The value of money decreases over time, meaning that the money you spend on a solar system today may be worth less in the future. Now, financing allows you to spread out the cost over time while also potentially locking in a lower interest rate. And this can make the investment more manageable and potentially more cost effective in the long run. Ask for a finance quote from your installer. Asking for a finance quote from your solar installer may be beneficial because they may be able to offer you better terms through their financing partners. Some installers effectively pay a deposit to the lender, which results in a better interest rate than you might get if you approach the lender directly. It's worth getting a finance quote from the installer, not installing a battery storage system to store the excess energy. This is a really important consideration. If you install solar panels at home, but you are away during the day, you won't be able to use the power that you generate. Instead, you'll have to export it to the grid for a fraction of the price of the energy that you will then end up having to buy back later. I think for the majority of use cases, it is not worth installing solar if you don't also install some battery storage. And in some cases, battery storage alone is more financially viable than installing solar panels. And I'll explain why later. If you have a hot water cylinder, it can work as a thermal battery, but it's not as efficient or as effective as a dedicated home battery. 
To make the most of your solar energy, you should use it in the following way, which is both cost effective and practical for most people. Number one, your incoming solar energy should be used to power your home first. Now after that, any excess should be stored in your home batteries. If you have more than 1.4 kilowatt of excess energy, you can use it to charge an electric vehicle. So any excess from the home batteries, once they're filled, can go into the EV. Any excess energy from the EV goes into the hot water cylinder. Finally, any excess energy should be sent to the grid. If you have batteries and you're away from home, the energy you generate will be available to you when you return. If you charge your EV from these batteries, you'll do so with approximately 90% round trip efficiency. However, if you can charge your EV during the day from the solar panels directly, well, that'd be even better as you'd get 100 miles of driving range charging direct from solar for every 90 miles of equivalent energy stored in the batteries. Now, this is controversial, but installing solar panels may be your worst choice. If you live in an area where electricity is already very cheap, then you may feel that the cost savings from solar panels might not be significant enough to justify the investment. If you have significant shading, perhaps by neighbouring properties or trees, although solar optimizers do go a long way in dealing with the efficiency loss, it just isn't ideal. The cost per panel of an unshaded panel and a shaded one are the same, but the generated output won't be. If you live in a building where it's not feasible or practicable to install solar panels, but you do have access to a time of use tariff, you may find that installing home battery storage is a compelling option that you might not have considered. You already know that home batteries store energy from solar panels for use during the evening or overnight. But what you might not know is that with a time of use or dual tariff, you can effectively download energy at a cheaper off-peak rate, which is typically in the middle of the night or for very short periods during the day, for use when energy prices are higher. The savings from this alone may make battery storage, even without solar panels, a financially sensible decision. You also gain protection from grid outages and by shifting your energy use from expensive peak times to cheaper off-peak times, you also help the grid to flatten that daily demand curve, which contributes towards a greener grid for all too. And all of this without generating any renewables. Whilst the financial and reliability based reasons for installing solar panels and home battery storage are certainly important, by generating your own electricity from the sun you can reduce your carbon footprint and help to combat climate change. Furthermore, solar panels and home battery storage systems can work together to create a more sustainable and resilient energy system for your home and community. Thanks for watching this episode of Solar Sunday, where we explore topics related to renewable energy. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you never miss an episode of this new Solar Sunday series. But Solar Sunday isn't the only thing we cover on this channel. We also discuss other topics like Tesla, software engineering, running a small business and freelancing. We also touch on scuba diving and environmental issues to bring a unique perspective to these topics. If you're interested in staying up to date with all this content, be sure to join our mailing list at www.divingdeveloper.net. So be sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications and join the mailing list to stay up to date with all of our content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week on Solar Sunday. Bye for now.